do we want to talk about Jim Cornette? Are we going to talk about him at all? Do we even breathe his name? Do we care? It's just, uh, he. This guy. <laughs> I don't know what to say about him. I, I did. Is he just saying time... shit to say shit? I don't, honestly, I yeah. don't keep my finger on the pulse of it enough. Sometimes I just see the crazy shit. I'm like, this is nuts. It's so outlandish. Well, now he's kind of, you know, he knows his rhythm. He knows what mm-hmm. get, gets listeners. Mm-hmm. You know, not only is he making money from the amount of people who listen to his podcast and advertisers, but he's got, you, he's got, they upload like eight YouTube clips a day yeah, uh, on YouTube and they're, they're making the money from that. Uh, so he knows what gets the, gets the listeners and makes the money because he's not leaving his house. He's right. like a, I don't know what Which, they call it, a gorf, gorf or something. Oh, oh, he's, oh, is he actually? Yeah. He don't like to leave. I think he likes oh. to go to the supermarket and that's it. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he won't do appearances anymore or anything. This is all he has, his podcast. Oh, shit. Gonna, oh, my God. This is how he's going to live out the rest of his life, which might be two years, might be 10 years. Who knows? Because evil never dies. We all know that. <laughs> but wow. I just think he's outlandish. He's crazy. Sometimes I listen to him because I, I do find it entertaining. You know, I, I am a fan of the – as much as I like to rile up those fans and say, I'm trying to kill the business, you know, I – I love the the olden days and the the stories from back then and all the craziness. Sure. And I, and I I do appreciate some of his insight, but recently in the last two years, it's gone off the chain. I think he called your husband the worst wrestler of all time or something. I which did is just see crazy. That. I did see. I I know, and it is crazy. And I definitely like you know. Anytime <laughs> you, see, I get more mad if I see someone talk shit about my husband than if I see someone talk shit about me. I'm like, excuse the f- you, what? Yeah, it drives yeah. me nuts. Yeah, I, 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 I've been attacked by his fans. His fans are the worst part of his culture because they they take everything he says gospel. It, like, what is his demo? Like, who are his fans? Like, what are who who is like the general kind of person that comes at you from like the Jim Cornette uh, army? I would say they're maybe mid thirties, okay, to early fifties is like his demographic. And last week in LA, some guy came to the show and he came to the soul show just for the sole intention to troll me. What? And I went up to him. He had a sign that says, Janela fears Brian last. So I went up to him. And I just ripped the sign out of his hand and he, he had a meltdown, uh, you know, and then that kind of, kind of woke, it's kind of a wake up call for me. Cause say these people have nothing to lose some of these people. And this is like their, yeah, this is like their religion. This is right. their religion. Like Jim Cornette is the 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 pastor of the church, and they're gonna drink his Kool Aid. Oh God, what a and, documentary uh, that would be! And I think sometimes you know I I don't know I might go out, you know, die back Daryl style. Some deranged fan comes in and 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 kills me because they believe every word he says and that I'm actually ruining the business they love. God. which is that's is actually ridiculous. scary because the, the world is nuts right now that you have to like yes. legitimately as much as you can like f- around and say something like that we are in this world where everyone is like a little bit cuckoo bananas right now oh, do you yeah. think about that like legit yeah someone brought it up to me like last year they're like what they're like maybe you should calm down a little bit some of these people are actually crazy like they're sending facebook messages to my mom no uh, yeah it's just, it got crazy it's, just sending me just the most deranged messages on my personal Facebook, on my mom's Facebook, family members, like Jim Cornette fans. And you have to realize that these people are a little bit crazy. Um, oh my God. But now everywhere I go, there's always at least one fan that is there for the sole intention of heckling me. I feel but like we it's need like, to get you some like backup security. Can we invest in some security? Yes, yes. I, I'll, I'll put it in the budget with Brad. But yes, security will probably be the guy, the same guy who <laughs> makes the deathmatch spider barbed wire net. We'll uh, take it. Listen, an extra yeah. body is an extra body. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's things have gotten a little bit crazier because I do rile these people up. They think they think I'm thin skinned but by the abuse I get on the internet, I, I, you can't be thin skin in that scenario because I would be 
I'd wash my hands of the wrestling business long ago if I was right. anyone else. Right. But people come up to me and they say, oh, listen, I was a Jim Cornette fan, but then I came to a GCW show and I saw you and I saw the way you connected with the audience. And I, mm -hmm. I seen the, how hard you worked and it changed my perception on you. But my perception on you was always that you were like 300 pounds or you were some kind of crackhead wrestler. But what? that's these echo chambers they create. They just don't know. They make, them, they make themselves feel better. They don't, yeah. some of these people don't even know what I, I look like or they, they never see me ever. They just listen to the words of Cornette that I, he, he likes to say I'm some kind of drug addict, that I'm, that I'm 300 pounds, that I'm this, that I'm that. So these people, this is what they speculate that I am. And then they meet me and they're like, wait a second, this is, Hold this on, is not yeah. what you're the, the, the trade as. And sold a bill so. of bad goods. That's crazy. That, I mean, I yeah. guess, I mean, I guess that's just true too. It's like so many people, wh whatever you're listening, like whether it's wrestling or not, but you like hear a certain amount of information of people, people don't want to take that next step to do their own research. They just listen to the gospel of whoever spewing out whatever information. And um, yeah, that's a <laughs> slippery slope if I've ever seen one. Yikes. And it's, yeah, and it's crazy because when you look at it, how ridiculous wrestling is, it's half naked dudes wrestling each other. And no, underwear, it's all basically. calm down and just enjoy it for what it is. You know, it's just, you know, I, I said the other day, once, you know, you got past the attitude error, that was the tip of the iceberg. It was so crazy and outlandish. So where do you go after that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have to treat this as entertainment. You can't, you, there's no way you can, Vince Russo basically, you know, as much as I loved it as a, as a teenager, Vince Russo, ECW, all this responsible for but the death of the business, as they like to say, which is yeah. the business is not dead. Along with mixed martial arts came around that people mm -hmm. gravitated towards that. And the yeah. attitude era was just so ridiculous and so outlandish. People were giving birth, 80 year old women giving birth to, <laughs> to a hand. Hands, yeah. <laughs> uh, Undertaker trying to murder people in Steve Austin and funeral homes. Once you yeah. reach that, to, you can't go back to that. This is a real sport this right you, you have to treat it as entertainment and yeah that's my view on it and my view is and and my view on myself is to get as much eyes and people saying my name as possible so i'm going to keep on going on twitter and i'm going to keep on fighting with these idiots and uh you know i'm sure someone's got to do it right go out there and yeah battle these goons